What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance crew, and you are watching DaVinci Reacts. Let me get over. I'm not sure if the mic stand is in the way. just want to make sure it's not focusing or changing the focus of the camera. I still have to learn how to do manual uh, focus on this particular camera. It's like trying to fucking set a damn airplane or something. Anyway, I've been getting into a set of videos recently called Geometry or Geography Now. This particular set of videos goes into detail about the history and landscape and makeup of specific countries. So each video is dedicated to a unique country. Um, I've seen a handful of them. Uh, this one is one I have not seen yet. This is a episode dedicated to Italy. The reason I wanted to do this was for two reasons. One, because I wanted to see how he, um, <clears throat> how the host ties in the entire history of Italy from the wherever they were before the Roman Empire to the Roman Empire specifically to after to World War Two to now. And the second reason why I wanted to get into it was because I kind of said some fucked up stuff about Italy <laughs> in my video on uh, the history of World War Two, not specifically Italy itself, but their inability to be an effective military so this is kind of my i'm sorry we're sorry sorry <laughs> video to uh, italy let's go and check this out and let's see the history of italy in its fullest well i'm personally excited because today we cover the country where one quarter of my heritage comes from italia there is no such thing as a single type of italian people from sicilia would almost need a translator to understand people in veneto napoli looks incredibly different from milano and people from south tyrol are like uh warum sind wir hier but for what it's worth italy has definitely made its mark and today we jump in va bene cominciamo Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs, Normally, derived from my last name Barbato, there. which translates to Beard Man. I'm serious. Hey, laugh all you want, but that just means I might be related to Scipio Africanus Barbatus, the guy who defeated Hannibal in, I think, the Second Punic War. So ha! I got victory <laughs> in my blood! Nah, I'm probably related to some ancient guy that sold barley or something. Barley that was eaten by Scipio Africanus Barbatus who <laughs> defeated Hannibal! So yes, I still got it! I basically defeated Hannibal! But where was Hannibal defeated? Let's find out in... In Italy, it's all about tutte le strada portano a Roma. First of all, Italy is that boot-shaped country kicking two deflated soccer balls located in Europe at the heart of the Mediterranean Sea, bordered by France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia in the north, and two microstates are completely engulfed within Italy, the Vatican City and San Marino, which is like the easiest country to sneak into. Like seriously, there's a Japanese restaurant and a sports store next to the entrance with no guards. With two, this makes Italy the wow. country with the most other countries enclaved inside of it. South Africa was so close with Swaziland, but then Mozambique had to exist Oh, and there was that time Reggio tried to secede from Italy back in the 70s, which almost made it three, but that's a whole other story. Just look it up. The country is divided into 20 regions mm. with the capital Rome. Five of the regions have special autonomous status. Sardinia, Sicily, Trentino Alto, or Sud Tirol, otherwise known as South Tyrol, Yaosta Valley, and Friuli Venezia Giulia. The country's largest cities are, of course, the capital of Rome, then Milano and Napoli, with the busiest airports being Rome, Leonardo da Vinci, Fiumicino, Milan, Malpensa, and Bergamo Caravaggio International Airports. In addition to the two largest islands, Island Sicilia and Sardinia. The country owns over 350 islands off its coast. Finally, there's that land dispute with France over the summit of Mont Blanc and a small little two and a half kilometer long enclave in Switzerland called Campione d'Italia, which is kind of like a special spot exempt from the EU value added tax. I love watching these damn videos about classical um, countries and stuff. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to do videos. I'm not going to react to all their videos. Uh, another thing, go watch the original video before you watch this because... And you know, that way you can give them a view and they can continue to make, you know, the, the videos that we all enjoy. As of right now, he's only on, like, he's doing all the countries in alphabetical order. And I think right now he's only on M. I could be wrong, but I think he's on M. So he has a lot of countries that he has to uh, go over. But I do think I will be doing reviews of the oldest countries. So my next reviews will probably be on Egypt, China, India, Iran. I think those are like the oldest countries but um going into it when you go from like the ancient history of a country to the renaissance era and you see all the great people that these countries have produced um italy is the i believe the country that produced the most 
intelligent minds as far as Leonardo da Vinci, I believe Galileo was from Italy. Like there's just a ton of people that, you know, came from it well, I mean the Roman Empire was huge, so they don't necessarily have to be from Italy to just a area that Italy controlled. But even still, it they were still technically Italian. Um, I believe Germany back in the, back in those days was more for the music. They had like the Beethovens and things like that. So it's like it's almost like each country during the Renaissance had a specific genre of entertainment or art that they were great in. Italy was also great with painters. And it's just amazing going back and looking into this stuff. Which makes sense because it has Italy's largest casino. Phew, Italy, you got some complication monadics going on. The funny thing is, modern Italy once even tried to take a stab at colonialism in the late 19th and early 20th centuries with areas stretching from the Balkans, Northern Africa, and the Horn of Africa, including a short kind of occupation of Ethiopia, but it didn't last that long because the Ethiopians fought back relentlessly. And to this day, it's back to the boot with two deflated soccer balls. Guys, I'll convert metric for you, but I call it soccer, okay? The Canadians, South Africans, Australians, Kiwis, Japanese, and parts of Ireland and the Philippines and Papua New Guinea all agree with me okay it's not just americans that call it soccer calcio. <laughs> okay good luck with that now this is the part where i typically go down the list of notable sites found yeah, in so Italy. i'm not alone however the problem is there are literally too many i'm not even joking italy has more heritage sites than any other country in the world and they deserve 50. it we all know about the big guys so i'm not going to mention most of them instead through my extensive research here are some obscure lesser known yet equally fascinating spots worthy of noting the dining table of bilalante the bomarzo horror garden i piapi a theme park made of rides that require your own kinetic energy to operate the necropolis of Banditaccia, hmm. La Scarzuola Monastery, the free wine fountain of Camino di San Tommaso. Let that just sink in. Free wine. The relics of Jesus' apostle St. Thomas, the geothermal waterfalls of Tuscany, the sunken city of Baia, the cliffside town of Santa Gata de Gotti, the sulfuric fields of Puzzuoli, that fortress built by that crazy guy, the Urbania wow. mummies, the Custino sword in the stone, the nine layer maze of Villa Pisani, the road of 52 tunnels, the pyramid zone of Castello, the Encantado heads carved by a crazy guy. There's a lot of monuments <laughs> made by crazy people. And of course, way too many castles, fortresses, churches, monasteries, museums, and ancient sites to list, but you get the point. Now let's blast off like a volcano, which is Italy has into the next segment, shall we? Dun, dun, dun. Now, we all know that Italy is insanely beautiful in so many areas. Everybody wants to see it. I mean, even Mr. and Mrs. Information went there on their honeymoon. You're welcome. First of all, <laughs> Italy's beauty comes at a cost. The country lies just above the convergence of the Eurasian and African plates in the Mediterranean, but also on the Apennine or Apennini thrust fault line that smashes into Western Europe, and that's how the Alps were formed. Basically, the Alps make like a barrier in the north oh. with the Apennini Mountains running along the entire length of the country as like a scoopy spine until it technically ends in the island of Sicilia. Because Italy's mountains are volcanic fault formed, it has created some amazing natural formations like the Dolomiti Rocks, the steep sides of Lake Garda, the largest lake in Italy, the Umbria Valleys, the undulating hills of Tuscany. This also means that Italy is kind of split in half east and Man, Italy looks like the entire country was designed by whoever the hell takes pictures for windows and uses them as desktops because I swear if you take some of those pictures and just put a couple icons in the corner you would have a goddamn wallpaper. That's what it looks like. West with a major lush basin locked in the north that receives an abundance of fresh snow cap water melt, creating rivers like the longest one, the Po River, located in the aptly named Po Valley. This valley extends about 650 kilometers, 400 miles, all the way from the French border to the Adriatic Sea, which ends at a little city you may have heard of called Venezia, or Venice. This also means that Italy is a volcanic country. To this day, there are about 30 volcanoes, three known active ones, Etna, Stromboli, and the famous Vesuvius, making it the most densely populated and potentially deadly volcanic region in the world world. It's like, yeah, I know I could die, but oh man, the pizza here is totally worth it. Speaking <laughs> of which, about a quarter of the land is arable, allowing them to grow lots of food. I'm sure you are fully aware of the typical Italian dishes. However, each region kind of specializes in a certain cuisine. In the north, you have foods like polenta, gnocchi, white truffles, Liguria has great pesto, and in South Tyrol, you have Germanic-inspired dishes like noodle dumplings and strudel. In the center, you have things like lasagna, boar, artichokes, lamb, steak, gelato, pasta, which comes in over 600 variations, and disputably the best wine is in Toscana, the south is the pizza kingdom and Napoli is like the capital. Sardinia is known for those cool cheese fritter dumpling things. Italy enjoys a mild Mediterranean climate, only snowing in the north and high altitude areas. Now, I've seen a few of these videos and I'm not going to lie. Some of the food doesn't look good. That's just how it is. But man, it like just watching the pictures, I can smell the kitchen that they're being made in and like you just smell the aromas y'all ever been to an area and like somebody started cooking and you can just smell it from like a mile away man 
Despite deforestation and pollution being an issue, I'm gonna start a GoFundMe. Every year now, Italy is actually the send most fauna send, biodiverse send Da Vinci back to Italy. <laughs> species recorded. That's about a third of all European fauna. About 4,800 are endemic, like the Sardinian red deer, the Italian cave salamander, the Alpine marmot, Marsican brown bear, the crested porcupine, and the national animal, the Italian wolf. Otherwise, as the eighth largest nominal GDP in the world and the eighth largest exporter, Italy's economy is heavily driven off of industry and production, specifically in luxury items. Major world-renowned companies. Companies like Fiat, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Maserati, Ducati, Pirelli, Armani, and Versace, yeah. Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci, and Prada are key players in keeping Italy afloat. In many ways, there's kind of like a sense of class that's almost expected with being Italian. No matter how intense things may get, you don't just waltz in here with your shoes unpolished. Which brings us to... Italy is known now, for Now, being Italian, we've all heard the stereotypes. Brands. Loud, passionate, hand-gesturing, bad-driving, temperate, sensitive, clean freaks that never follow the rules. And as offensive as that may sound, it's kind of based off of truth. But with good reasoning. We'll explain in a bit. But first, Italy has about 61 million people in their country, and they are the third most populous country in the EU after the whole Brexit thing, and the sixth in all of Europe. Getting the exact ethnic makeup in Italy is a little difficult because Italy is a lot more diverse than you would think. About 92% of the country identifies as ethnically Italian, although keep in mind that's kind of a broad term considering how many different types and shades of Italian there are, but nonetheless Italian. Whereas about 2% are Romanian, 1% North African, and the rest of the country is made up of a slew of global people groups, everything from Albanian, Eritrean, Chinese, and Ukrainians. They also use the Euro, the Type-C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now when it comes to Italy, it basically comes down to two things, North and South. Southerners like to jokingly call Northerners polentoni based off of the polenta that they eat, and likewise Northerners like to call Southerners terroni, which I actually don't even know where that's based off of. My research kind of ended there. If you know, type it in the comments. Basically, the mm. North is like where all the financial districts and stereotypical uppity preppy people live, whereas the South is kind of like where the rustic tough people live. Plus, you know, the South is kind of like mafia territory. Oh, come on. Everybody already knows it. You have the Costa Nostra <laughs> in Sicilia, Ndrangheta in Calabria, the Comora in Campania, and the Sacra Corona Unita in Puglia. Don't worry, though. If you visit as a tourist, you should be fine. It's not much of a big deal anymore. I mean, unless you start a mob war by yourself, nothing will pretty much happen. So, no starting mob wars, okay? Got it? <laughs> there are so many different dialects and subgroups like South Tyrol mostly speaks German, kind of. Aosta Valley speaks French, sort of. No, but seriously, the standard Italian language spoken and taught today is based off of the Florentine version of Tuscan Italian, which is kind of like an intermediate between the Gallo-Romance dialects of the North and the Italo-Dalmatian dialects of the South. This all happened because prior to Italian unification, the country was split between multiple kingdoms and states, each with their own semi-Latin-based language, which made communication a little bit of a challenge. For example, in standard Italian, you might say, di dove sei? But in Sicilian, di unisi, in standard, ciao, come stai, tutto bene? But in Venetian, u come vale, tutto bene? In standard, forchetta. In Lombard, Peru? This is one of the reasons why Italians attribute the creation of the famous Italian hand gestures. People would travel barely 50 kilometers and find themselves in a hard to understand dialect region. So essentially they had to kind of get their point across fast. There's a saying that Italians have l'arte di arrangiarsi or the art of arranging which translates to something like the art of figuring it out on your own. When words fail, hands succeed. There's no specific code but some generally accepted gestures include things like mi dispiace, sei pazzo, bere vino, bellissimo, delicioso, stai Tento. Ma cosa dici? Perfecto. And vai la corona. Speaking of societal background, we don't have enough time to explain looked, the entire looked, history of Italy, but in the quickest way I vulgar. can put it, <laughs> Etruscans, Romans, Christianity, ridiculous amount of separate kingdoms and feudal states, barbarian invasions, Byzantines, medieval kingdoms, Renaissance, Napoleonic invasions, Sardinia, Piedmont unifies Italy after three independence wars, or four depending on who you ask, mass emigration to other countries begins, World War One, fascism, World War Two, resistance movement, after war, economic boom, 2008 crisis, which brings us here today. Basically the epicenter of ancient Rome was here, hence the capital being named Rome. Speaking of which, even though the Italian monarchy ended long ago, there are still two descendants that still exist today acting as heir apparents. The Catholic Church has played a major role in Italy even to this day. Almost every single town has at least one church. About 88% of the country identifies as Catholic, however only a third say they are active practitioners on a weekly basis. And one of the reasons why Italy has made such a universal mark is partially because between the late 1800s and early 1900s, Italy experienced a mass emigration in which over the years around 25 million left. This is considered the largest mass migration of contemporary times. Suddenly you have new communities of Italians all over the world in places like Brazil, Argentina, the US, UK, and France. Oh wow, this video is running long and I didn't even get to talk about the deadly Calcio Florentino Game of Florence or, or the Santa Maria delle Grazie Snake Looks Festival like Opera Pupi in Sicilia. So many cool things, but we gotta move on. Some notable people either from Italy or of Italian descent might include people like Cicero, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Dante Alighieri, Niccolo Machiavelli, Donatello, Caravaggio, Galileo Galilei, Christopher Columbus, 
Americo Vespucci, Marco Polo, Niccolo Paganini, Giuseppe Garibaldi, Luigi Pirandello, Federico Fellini, Luciano Pavarotti, Andrea Bocelli, Umberto Eco, Sofia Loren, I don't be naming Rossi, names Roberto for a minute. Baggio, <laughs> Monica Bellucci, Silvio Berlusconi, Enzo Ferrari, Donatella Versace, Giorgio Armani, mainstream American artists of Italian descent might include so many stars like Frank Sinatra, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Sylvester Stallone, Leonardo DiCaprio, Steve Buscemi, Quentin Tarantino, Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, even Nicolas Cage has some Italian in him. Again, Italian people have such a strong and solid history and culture, but what does the rest of the world think of them? And what do they think about their neighbors? Well, that brings us to... Off the top of my head, before he goes ahead and uh, lists some things, I'm going to go ahead and think of what I think of when I think of Italians. It's kind of hard pinpointing exactly what comes to mind when you think of Italians because there's multiple types of Italians. There are the stereotypical, I call them Mario Italians. You know, the Mamma Mia. I know it's a stereotype, but that's one thing that tends to pop up in some people's minds. And then you have... Like with me, I think of Renaissance era. I think of people like Leonardo da Vinci and Galileo and Michelangelo and all, all those types of people. That's what I think of. I think of uh, composers, artists, um, singers, and stuff like that. There are, I mean, some people think of mob, I guess, is another stereotype that can get thrown around. Um, food. <laughs> think of people cooking. You think of the stereotypical Italian mother, the ones that cook and, you know, always worried about their son and shit like that. Like, oh, it, it it's like you think about Italians and sometimes you can get this like scary image in your head. But then at the same time, you can also get this like motherly loving image in your head as well. You can think of people that can be idiots which everybody has their set of idiots but then you can think of people that are like the greatest minds in the history of humanity like it's like i said italians have been around so long that you can get like everything from the image of an italian it's it's just an amazing country i wish america had the history that some of these countries have especially as an african-american because we have hardly no history our history begins after slavery for the most part like slavery in and of itself was one long piece of history, but it wasn't anything that we necessarily left our mark on. That was something that was kind of just put on us. I consider American history to be when, like during the Reconstruction era, when black people were getting elected to be senators immediately after um, slavery had ended. And then you have the Jim Crow era, and then you have the, uh, the early 1900s, I don't know if it has necessarily has a name. I, I, gotta, I just call it the lynching era because that was the era when people were just getting lynched at a, a crazy rate and you had these activists that were fighting against it who I consider to be the bravest activists in the entire civil rights movement, uh, even more so than in the 60s because in the 60s, at least the fight had attention drawn on it. Back in like the 1950s and 1920s and 1930s, like if, if if you protested and got killed, there was no press. There was nothing. You just died. <laughs> so when you look back at people like Ida B. Wells and W.E.B. Du Bois and uh, Booker T. and uh, people like that, like they were fighting in a period when they could have easily got killed and nothing would have been remembered about them, period is a really great guy once you get to know him but that's just the thing you gotta warm up to them al dente style first of all france is like their best frenemy they smile at each other but secretly they're always trying to compete with who has the highest class and elegance they also hate the fact that france has leonardo da vinci's mona lisa nonetheless with historical bumps like world war ii they still cooperate well today argentina is like their adoptive daughter that they sent to spanish boarding school but they still fiercely refuse to make friends with their neighbors as mentioned in the argentina <laughs> video the majority and largest demographic of people in argentina have italian heritage and they love doing business business with Italy. Malta and San Marino are kind of seen as like their little sons that they love helping out, even though San Marino is like way older than the modern unified state of Italy, but that's besides the point. They think it's cute how Malta speaks their own language that kind of incorporates Italian words, and San Marino is like their good luck charm who more or less has always been peaceful and drama free since the 4th century. Of course the Vatican is like a unique player that they pay their respects to, but will not give the opportunity to raise another empire, and hence they keep them confined to the Basilica grounds. In terms of their best friends though, literally every Italian I talked to has said the exact same two countries, Greece and Spain. As mentioned in the Greece episode, they live by
by the una faza una razza rule. One face, one race. These three countries make the trinity of the Mediterranean. You know it's gonna be a good time when you put a Spaniard and a Greek and Italian in the same room. Nothing can stop them. They own the seas, <laughs> they trade, they share stories, they drink together, they marry the crap out of each other. In conclusion, for centuries, Italy has been a beacon of art, literature, fashion, architecture, history, religion, cuisine, traditions, and landmarks to the rest of the world. And personally, I'm proud to be a part of it. But most importantly, I'm proud that my barley selling bearded ancestors basically killed Hannibal and saved the universe. And I get to take like at least 40% of the credit. It. So basically, I saved the universe. Totally true, not made up, 100% fact. Stay tuned, the Ivory Coast is coming up next. Ireland. Yeah, uh, let me go ahead and check my time real quick. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, Italy in and of itself is an amazing country. Like, I really want to visit it one day. I know that, like, there was a period in time on this channel when I identified myself as the original Renaissance man. I probably should have looked more in depth at that because I'm, I'm not, I, like, I should have explained it better. I know goddamn well I'm not the original Renaissance man. That is stupid to even think that I was being serious when I said that. I was when I said it I was thinking more in lines of the original Renaissance man on YouTube. Mainly because I wanted my channel to have to incorporate everything. I wanted to be able to do reactions, drawing videos, gameplay videos, vlogs, fitness vlogs, like anything that's happened on YouTube, skits, voiceovers, anything that's happened on YouTube, I wanted to, you know, dabble in it and master it. That's mainly why I identify as Renaissance man. The original Renaissance Man thing was just something that I said during one of the videos and I just liked the way it sounds, so I stuck with it. But even but like I said, the whole reason why I said it mainly was because I was trying to I was trying to say that I was the original Renaissance Man of YouTube. But even then that's wrong because there was people on YouTube that were called Renaissance people before I started making videos. Now, my channel was created in 2007, so it's possible my channel's older than theirs, but I wasn't making videos until, I want to say 2016, maybe. So there were channels before me that used that name publicly. So even then, I was still wrong. So that's why I changed it around. So from now on, I am Devon Da Vinci, leader of the Renaissance crew. That is, that is my legacy on YouTube. <laughs> so all my older videos, I say original Renaissance man, just ignore it. It's a phase. I'll get out of it as soon as you start watching newer videos. Um, but that's pretty much it. I want to thank you guys for coming through and watching this video with me. Um, be sure to check out more Geography Now. Um, there will be a link in this video where you can click on and it will take you to their channel where you can subscribe to them and watch the videos that he currently has up. Um, like I said, again, make sure you check the original link in the description box and watch the original video first. That goes for every one of my videos. If I'm reacting to something, watch the original first if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, then you're good. But if you haven't seen it, go watch the original first. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the deuces. And I don't know if I said if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. But there you go. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. But until then, I'm going to give you the deuces, and I'll see you around. Deuces.